Hello, this is Emma from Emma Bunting and today's tutorial is all about making bunting for your fairy garden. And if you don't want to make it in a fairy garden, you can put it on top of your cake. But it's really easy to do and quite fun to do with the children. So, what will you need to make your mini bunting? You'll need a paper, ruler, pencil, pen for drawing out your template. You'll need some sort of twine or thread in order to hang the bunting off. So this could be baker's twine or it could even be garden twine, whichever you want. These come in lots of different colors. Or if you've just got lying around in the house embroidery threads, these are equally as good. This one uh, we use as DMC. We quite like their embroidery threads. Now, if you don't want to use fabric, you can actually make it out of paper. And if you do so, you need a, a glue gun and lots of different colour papers. Actually, what I, I often use is old envelopes. For some reason, I have lots of different odd envelopes. So we could use those um, brightly coloured and glue them together in the same way. So the way you make it is the same. But this, is going to, this tutorial will focus on using fabric. Now, to make the fabric bunting, you will need a bonder web. Now this you can buy from Amazon or eBay. It's a roll of fusible uh, paper, rough on one side, shiny on the other, the other. You'll also need to get yourself a hot iron and a pair of scissors. So how do we make it? Really, really easy. So first things first, decide how big you want your triangle. Now we, our triangles are usually around two and a half centimeters wide and two and a half centimeters long. So to create your template, you need to make a diamond. So double the triangle shape and size. So draw the template. Um, I find it easier to uh, draw a rectangle and then draw my diamond within it, just so it's all the lines are straight. So this diamond is going to be five centimeters long and two and a half centimeters wide. I'm going to trace the design onto my bonder web. Now the rough side goes down and I'm going to trace light tracing paper on the smooth side just over the triangles. Now in my design I'm going to make eight different flags so I'm going to actually just trace this eight times. So you decide how many flags you want on your length and you just draw out and create your number. Now if you're using paper you would cut out your template, put that on the paper, and then cut the shapes out on the line. So, but with a bondi web, you just need to cut the bondi web out. Don't cut along the lines. We need that extra space for when we uh, press this onto the fabric. So as you can see, you can see all the tri uh, diamonds all drawn out there. So what we need to do now is get our iron set. We need to set it to hot but make sure you take off the steam setting. We don't need any steam. So what we're gonna do first is actually get our fabrics. I've gone for four different red fabrics. Press the right side and then flip it over. We're actually going to press the diamond shapes onto the wrong side of the fabric. So I have four fabrics. So as I've got eight flags, I want two diamonds of each colored flag. So I'm going to cut my two diamonds out and I'm going to lay the rough side of the bonder web directly to the fabric, the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm going to press with my hot iron for about three seconds. You don't need to uh, rub over with the iron, just hold it and press hard. Now the bonder web will fuse directly to the fabric. So what we need to do now is just cut along those lines that you drew the diamond shapes and then you've got your, your little flags. So the little flags finished will be on one side your fabric and on the other your bondi web. Now just a word of no warning here. I I'm just going to show you here stripes and squares. If you are going to use something with a straight line or a straight pattern, make sure you line up the lines and the squares so that you're, it will look straight from the front when you look at it. If it doesn't have a pattern on the fabric that really matters, then don't worry. 
Okay, next thing you're going to do is lay the flags out in the order that you wanted in, as a finished order. Now, I'm, I take a little time doing this. I'm a little bit faffy and never make up my mind. So it does take me a while to sort them out. But once they're laid out in the order that you want them to be, then we're ready to go. So take your thread or your twine, whatever you're going to use, and pull out and measure approximately double the finish width of your of your flags as they're lying down and then I find it really the easiest thing for me to do is find the middle bit of the thread and I actually work from the middle and work out I find that just much easier so place the middle bit and the uh, down and mark it I usually use my scissors the easiest thing and this is actually an easy one because there are eight flags so I'm gonna have four on one side of the scissors and four on the other so, in order to create the uh, bunting length, we first of all peel the bondue backing off. Now, bondue comes in lots of different uh, brands and different prices. I would go for the more expensive one because the quality is better. If you go for a cheaper one, it's more difficult for you to pull off the backing and it takes you longer. So, once you pull off the backing, you lay the flag down with the right side down. You put the thread across the middle Fold the diamond shape in half to create a little triangle, press with your fingertips and then very carefully press with the hot iron and the bond web will, with the heat will fuse the two bits of fabric together and there you have it, you have your first bunting flag on your thread. Now if you're using paper you do the same method but you just use a glue gun instead of the iron and the bond web. So, all you have to do is just continue, peel off the back of the bondi web, lay the thread through the middle of the flag, pull the flag over so you've got your triangle shape, pinch down with your fingertips, and then press for the hot iron. And continue doing that until you've got all your little flags on your thread. Now, it does take a little bit of time, but I've, I've speeded this up so um, we can get through to the end of the video quite quickly. Uh, but just be careful you don't burn yourself on the iron because sometimes it can get quite hot when you're using the bondi web. So there you have it, the finished piece. So we're going to take it to our garden and here's our little fairy garden. Easy to put the uh, bunting up. I've used the sticks that you get with uh, new plants that you buy from the garden centre. They always have a, a label of what the plant is and they're the little sticks from the plant label. So I've just cut them in half and I've just stuck them into the soil and I'm just going to put the bunting on these sticks. Now sometimes it's a bit tricky to hang it up but once it's up it looks really really cute. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's really easy to use that technique for other bunting. We actually use it for cake bunting, so why don't you have a go at making your own cake bunting? Maybe with someone's name on. Or we'd love to see all your creations, so please feel free to share them with us and tag us on Instagram and Facebook. All our links are online. Thanks a lot.